Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be looking at how we can set up landing scenes and interactive scenes in Foundry using Trigger Happy, the Furnace, as well as Community Lighting to a certain extent, but that's really all the modules we'll be using today. So here is my landing scene that I've created. Whenever I click any of these words here, it's going to take me to a new scene. So here are my characters. Here is my calendar. My map as well as the journal I've created. I have done some videos in the past on Trigger Happy, but I will be covering all of the steps required to set this up today. Starting off with, I want to talk about where I got this WebM from, as well as how we can edit it very simply using the program I use. Perhaps you might have a better option, in which case I'll put a link down below to where you can jump ahead to the next part, which is actually setting up the Trigger Happy. So the scenery I'm using came from Benio's Battle Maps. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. But they have a number of various sceneries across different environments as well as battle maps. And they recently, within the last couple months, added in a Foundry tier to the Patreon. Which includes a Foundry pack to make it a lot easier to bring everything into your own game. So the first thing I did was I brought in the MP4 of the background I want. This will end up getting converted to a WebM at the end of the process. After doing this, we can go ahead and go to Insert Images. We're going to have an overlay over top just so we can have our menu there. For my own personal menu, all I did was create a black square and paint, and then I brought it into Honeycam. After doing that, I can go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees so that it fills out the right-hand side, as well as adjust the size. And then I'll go ahead and adjust the opacity so that I can still see the animated background behind and then I'll save. Now when you are using Honeycam, I recommend that you save and that you save often because if you undo, it will undo everything that was done prior to the last save. Meaning if you made a whole bunch of changes all at once, it'll undo everything. For the text from my landing screen, I did not really like the options for fonts in Foundry, nor the options for fonts in Honeycam because they were a bit too flashy. So I use this website, which is very simple. It just lets you type in text and that text is then converted to a PNG. When you download the PNG, it should already be transparent. If it is not, it is very simple to remove the background. I'll be showing that off very quickly here in paint.net. Here's the PNG I downloaded, which we can see it is already transparent. If it wasn't, you could just use the magic wand in paint.net on the left hand side. This is what I use. There are probably other programs you can use, such as GIMP, but I find this to be very simple. The rest of the editing within Honeycam is pretty simple. You would just bring in the files one by one and put them where you want them to be. Now let's go ahead and move back to Foundry and set up the Trigger Happy triggers. The first step, of course, is to actually install Trigger Happy as well as install the furnace and make sure that Trigger Happy is enabled on the left hand side. That is the smiley face right here. Next, you want to go ahead and create a folder titled Trigger Happy. And within that folder, you can create a new entry. Make sure the entry has a unique name, not Trigger Happy. When you are creating Trigger Happy triggers, you can use drawings, tokens, or actually even scenes to trigger different effects. For my setup, I use drawings because I don't want my players to actually see the boxes around, but you could just as easily use a token instead. So I start off my trigger by creating a drawing and placing it on top of the text here. And I put in the text content characters. This is going to act as our label for the trigger. After that, you can go ahead and create a trigger within the entry. And you can just label it at drawing characters at trigger click and then the scene. Let's go ahead and go through that whole process right now. Now, when you're doing this, the at trigger click is important because the drawings are not going to be visible. With Trigger Happy, if the triggering token or drawing is visible, the players can click it right away and it'll do whatever the effect is. But here we want it to be invisible, so we need to add this line right here. And then the final step is to go to our Scenes tab and drag in the scene we want to transition to. And we're done. So then you just go ahead and repeat that same process for anywhere else on the scene that you'd also like to be interactive. And then of course, when you go to a different scene, you could do the same thing there and have a new arrow or like I had, I had a home button to take me back to the title screen. 
A quick note before we get to UI, it is a good idea to set the initial view position to all the scenes to be the same. That way it's not jumping around too far to the left or the right when your players move. So as noted earlier, one of the things I added in is that when a player clicks on one of these spots, they'll also hear a UI sound. I'll go ahead and go through how I set it up. The first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to create two macros, or in my case I created two macros, you want to create one macro for every unique UI sound you plan to use. The macros you use for UI sounds are going to look very similar, so make sure you have distinguishing names or potentially distinguishing icons to tell the difference between the two. The only thing that's going to be different is right here at the file path. This file path should link to the sound you want to play. If you're having a hard time finding the file path, a good way to do it is going to your playlist and just copying over the file path from the sound there. I will be including a link to where you can find this macro down below in the description. To set up the trigger to play the UI sound, it's very simple. You just repeat the process of what you did before, except instead of dragging the scene, you drag the macro for the UI sound. And you're done. You just click save entry and now when you click the calendar drawing, it should also play a sound at the same time. It transitions to a new scene. Trigger Happy can also be used to create very interactive scenes for your players. But this might be a bit challenging if you have a scene that has a lot of different triggers taking players to different scenes. You as the GM may have a hard time keeping track of things. So for example right now, I have the scene here and there is a trigger set up. But if my player were to come to the scene, they would only be on this scene and they would not be able to go anywhere else. Until I as the GM describe where they would like to go and reveal the trigger. So in the coin district, there is a potion shop, which is marked by the icon right here. This is actually a token. When I click this macro, it will reveal. And if I click it again, it will hide. This is useful because the default behavior, as mentioned earlier, for tokens is if they are visible, when a player clicks it, they will transition to the new scene. But as it is right now, if they click this area, nothing's going to happen. The trigger setup for this is also incredibly simple as well. We just have at token and then the name of the token and then we drag the scene in onto our entry. The only other change I made is I also set it so that the token is emitting light to make it a little bit easier for the players to see. This is the current macro I'm using and when used it will reveal any tokens stay in potion shop if they are currently hidden or if they are not hidden it will hide them. Very simple. With the setup, you could also just right click and reveal and then the players would be able to transition and then hide as needed. But you could also link this to other macros you might have in place. Such as the death macro I've covered in a previous video, which I'll be linking above. This commoner is going to now perish and when the commoner perishes, this token is going to get revealed at the same time. So they're going to hit zero HP and then the token is revealed. And we can see how easy it is to transition to the new scene after it is revealed. That's what we're finishing up for today. Hopefully you'll be able to use this in your own game as I find Trigger Happy to be a very powerful and flexible module. I'll be putting links to everything I use in the description, but if you have any questions or comments that I did not answer, please go ahead and leave them down below and I'll do my best to help out. Please consider also subscribing for usual Foundry content. Thanks everyone!